Hey guys, still here in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. And FYI, this video has no poker hands in it. So if you're looking for poker hands, skip to the next video, but it would be a shame because this video is a cool conversation with Kristen Bicknell. Some of you guys are gonna know who she is, some of you won't know who she is. So it's interesting because uh, she's very much a rising star in the poker world. Uh, it's a pretty varied conversation. We talk about things such as what led her from cash to tournaments. Uh, she's now playing super high roller tournaments, so that's kind of badass. Um, what else do we talk about? We talked about what her main study tool is uh, and has been in poker over the years and a few other things. So I wanted to put the whole interview in here uh, as its own video since it's, it's like 13 minutes long or something. So enjoy this video and next video we'll have the poker hands, promise. All right, cheers guys. All right guys, here we are, here with Kristen Bicknell. Hey. Thanks for doing this. No problem. Uh, so the reason I wanted to have a chat with you and sort of introduce you on the vlog, okay. uh, multiple reasons. One reason A is because you've been crushing lately. Okay. Generally. And uh, <laughs> the other reason is because not long ago we were playing the same games. We were playing 5-10 at the Bellagio within like a couple of years ago or so. Something like that. Two, yeah. maybe three years ago. I think it was two ago. summers ago. I grinded a lot of uh, 510 there. Two summers ago, yeah, that yeah. sounds right. Yeah. Um, I think it was before your second bracelet. You yeah, had, you it was had, that summer. You had won the women's event, right? Yeah. And you hadn't won your second bracelet yet. Yeah. So this is two years ago. Yeah. And now we're playing super high rollers. Do you remember any hands we played? I'm curious. Uh, I, I just had to ask you. I remember a hand that you, well, not really. I mean, I don't remember Everyone the details. Everyone always remembers my hands. I would say, as a girl in poker, it's funny because I feel like everyone always remembers the hands I play. I don't, yeah. I can't blend in. I can and, see that. But, yeah, but I mean, it really wasn't, remember. it wasn't really remembered. I did it, something bad. No, no, no. I got really lucky. <laughs> You lost the hand. Okay. It wasn't. It wasn't the fact that it didn't have anything to do with the way you played the hand. It was more to okay. do with the fact that like somebody at the table like said something about the way you played the hand or something. Oh, like okay. That, that but, happens a lot too. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Sure, I'm sure it does. Yeah. Um, okay. But anyway, like this has been a pretty crazy uh, yeah. trajectory here over the past couple of years. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Sometimes I think when you're in it, you don't really realize, like, you know, just kind of like how far I've lined up. Yeah. And then sometimes when I hear someone kind of like tell, tell it to me, I'm like, oh yeah, you're right. I forgot <laughs> yeah. about that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, okay, so why don't we start like okay. at the beginning. I mean, it doesn't, you don't have to be like super detailed or sure. whatever, but just how you got started in poker, that usual yeah. question, backstory yeah. thing. Um, kind of the standard story. I was around with friends that were like, let's play poker. Didn't know what poker was that night. It's like 10 p.m. We start playing, and um, me and my ex-boyfriend at the time just played heads up to like noon the next day. And then from there, it was like I was obsessed and tried to find all the home games, found online. Just one thing led to another. I was yeah. 18 years old, found Turning Stone, which a lot of people, a lot of poker players, that's where we went because we were 18 years old and sure. in the age limit or whatever. So yeah, played there, found online, and then through my stages of playing online for like eight or 10 years, I would say I kind of uh, went through periods of times of grinding heads up sit and goes, and then tournaments, and then cash games, and then I'd grind cash games a long time, and then uh, live cash, and then live tournaments, and just kind of one thing led to another. Yeah, because I know, I think I, if I remember correctly, you were pretty heavy into online poker before Black Friday happened. Yeah, once they made Supernova League a little bit harder, and just online was changing okay. so much, then I decided, got, yeah, more into live cash. That's what it was, yeah. yeah. They made SNE a little bit less attractive. Exactly, yeah. yeah, it was harder to get, and kind of, yeah, just making online, money online was harder, sure. so. Something that uh, stands out to me, something something that you said uh, when we were playing, this is just before you won your second bracelet. Okay. Uh, you were you were set to play a tournament, I don't know if it was that tournament that you won, but you were gonna play a tournament the next day. Okay. And, and you, said, you said something like, you're talking about the tournament and you're like, yeah, I don't know, whatever, I suck at tournaments. <laughs> okay, and it was then, probably true. And then and then later on, in that summer, you win another bracelet. Yep. So, I'm curious, like, why you think you said that, that you suck at tournaments? Okay, honestly, I think that there's probably an aspect 
of tournament poker that I didn't feel very confident in, or, the, or the, rather that I, I was well aware that I wasn't incredibly skilled at, say, short stack poker or at certain stages of tournaments. However, I do think that I have, like, I don't know, some sort of natural talent for poker. Yeah. Not saying that, you know, I'm the best poker player in the world. I am certainly not, and I'm not, like, trying to... I, I'm really very well, just, honest about my skills. I mean, I just assumed it was, like, super modesty at the time. Yeah. And, I mean, you were already, you already won the women's event. Yeah. Uh, you are obviously, like, a really good poker player in general. Okay. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, but... <laughs> All right. Well, uh, yeah. See, so, yeah, I think That's it's just really modesty. Funny. I think it's just the modesty. But uh, yeah, I'm just curious. Like since then, there must have been um, some skill sets that have developed. Yeah. And uh, do you can you think like back to then that you can see like pretty clearly that those skill sets have developed or? Yeah. I yeah. actually that was an interesting period of time for me because what had happened was not that I was struggling for a little period of time, but I, after um, I decided not to do SME anymore, I was playing on some other sites, playing lower stakes, just kind of um, had a small bankroll at the time and was kind of uh, grinding it out and I didn't really know where, you know, my goals were, like where to focus. I didn't really know, should I, should I switch to tournaments now? Should I play live cash or whatever it was? And then that summer I was like, you know, I'm gonna focus on cash summer, play some of the tournaments that I thought were good. That summer was interesting because I had just moved up to 5'10 from playing 2'5 pretty much my whole life. I feel like, not that I regret it, but I think that I I never pushed myself very much, at, especially early on in my poker career to play higher stakes. I always kind of was comfortable, like I had a nice hourly rate at 2'5, I felt really comfortable, so I just stayed grinding that for a while and then um, kind of that was a period of time where I realized, you know, I played five times of logic and realized, wow, this game's not that hard. And I did really well that summer in cash there. And then I then I went into that tournament with that attitude of like, I suck at tournaments, but maybe I'll get lucky. And I really do think that there's an element of playing a tournament with like a positive, calm mindset. And I think it allowed me to play in a way that I wasn't overthinking things. I could follow my like intuition and spots. Okay. I felt not too attached to the outcome. Um, I just had a really good attitude and tried to have fun. And I, I don't know, maybe it's silly. I know some people think it's like ridiculous, but I think good things happen from that frame of mind and from that stage. And when I won that tournament, it was like, in, it's so incredibly fun going deep in a tournament right. that I was like, it allowed me to, it boosted my bankroll a lot, it allowed me to have some more flexibility with what I chose to play, and I just decided I wanted to play more tournaments, and then from there, if you were asking about the skill set with tournaments, I decided to push myself more in tournaments, focus on tournaments, and now I would say I'm like really, really trying to get good at tournaments, and that's what I've been doing for the last year. Trying to get good at them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if you're trying to get good at them, oh, all right. Um, so, what is your sort of? Uh, what would you say has been like the main s study tool um, for your tournaments? Mm, that's play? a good question. Um, is it uh, like training sites? Yeah. Is it talking with friends? Yeah, to... I wish I could say that I did things that were more conventional, but I feel like for me, it's a lot of playing, talking with friends when I'm playing, like studying what the good players are doing, what the bad players are doing. Um, Interesting, so just like a lot of hand review probably. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. And I mean, there's like a little bit of getting friends to tell me like, yeah, you know, the, this is like a good play in this spot. Like there is yeah. like advice from friends. I, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, that's sort of been like, I've talked about this on the blog a bunch. That's been, it, that's been the thing that's uh, that I've done like yeah. throughout the years uh, of okay. just grinding poker is just networking and having a circle of friends to like always be able to go to with questions. Yeah. And ideally, some of those friends play higher than I do. You know, yeah. they've, they've moved through the levels, and a couple of them play. You know, like uh, a 10-20 or 25-50 cash games. Yeah. So if I can approach them for questions, 
and they can you know give me their insight then sure. that's obviously super valuable yeah i think that that's huge who you're hanging around with the poker is massive and um, i really believe in putting in quality time at the poker table so you know actually putting in the hours and making sure that it's quality you know what i mean sure. you actually are focused you're not sitting on your phone because I do believe to some extent you can learn while you're playing like quite a bit. I, if anything, that's probably what I say I do. And I feel still shy to say I'm a good poker player, but if you're gonna say you think I'm good at poker, I would say the reason is because <laughs> because I've played so many hands yeah. that I, from that, if you just pay attention in the hands that you're playing, you learn so much information. So I just have a very good, I don't know, maybe understanding of just, you know the hands and I would say that as I progress in my poker career um, it's less often that squats come up where I feel uncomfortable and I can view hands in a different way that I couldn't like a year ago do you know what I mean I think so yeah. yeah and so so for me personally I really think playing I'm also someone I try watching training videos and I'm like oh my god I want to play like 20 minutes in I'm oh, like yeah loading up the lobby I just interesting yeah I'm not a studier so I'm a doer I'm okay. really not good at observing yeah. I mean the cool thing I think is that there's so many uh, there's so many different ways to learn now whether that's yeah. training sites or a coach or you know just having poker friends to go over hands with yeah uh, the thing is not to like do one thing and then that's the thing the thing is to find the thing that works for you and allows you to like keep learning that way yeah. and not get discouraged to where it's like this is boring I'm not gonna study anymore I'm just gonna play yeah you know? And I feel like a lot of people, what hurts them is um, they get caught up in trying to learn theory and watching someone's videos and trying to emulate their game. I think it would be a mistake to just, you know, watch videos and try to play, play like someone because I know that during a period of um, when I was playing, I think that's what hurt me the most. I, I struggled a lot because I was trying to was overthinking things or I was trying to think like, what would this person do? What would this guy say to do in this spot? Yeah. If you're still playing poker after, I don't know, a few years and you've won money, you probably have a natural talent at poker. And I think that all of, I, I really believe to channel that natural talent Yes, combine it with theory and studying, you know, like, sure. PO's great. It's really good to have that knowledge of understanding what other people are knowing, you're learning, yep. um, but it doesn't, in my opinion, it's not everything in poker, especially live poker, because it, you know, spots come up that are so unique, and yep. I think that's the beauty of live poker, too. So I think it's, I don't know, I, I believe in like there is an intuition side of poker that I really believe in. It's interesting. There's like an old school <laughs> poker soul here. I know. <laughs> I know. And, and see, maybe that's why I say I'm not good at poker because I know people just think it's like fishy. But I don't know. Yeah. I mean, your results are going to speak for themselves. I mean, yeah. You, you know, it's you're sure. gonna. You, each person is gonna be different. Whatever works for that person yeah. is, you know, who's to say that that shouldn't work for that person? Yeah. Right? That's what I. That's what I say. Yeah. All right. One more thing. One more kind of general topic. Sure. Uh, something else that okay. uh, stuck out in, during our five ten conversations okay. back in the day. Um, I think it was. I don't know which birthday it was, but it was your birthday. Okay. And you were. You were saying whether <laughs> you're gonna so go hard. out. You were saying whether you're gonna go out or not. And <laughs> You said, probably not. I know the answer. Okay. You said, I just love poker. <laughs> yeah. That's all you want to do is just play poker. So, like, the question is on a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you love poker? <laughs> I love poker so much, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, yeah, I definitely didn't go out. I've gone out once in Vegas for, like, 15 minutes. I was just saying today, all of my friends are at dinner and doing things. Like, I've bagged in the, we're in the middle of the main event right now. I've already bagged day two. I was playing cash today. Um, yeah. which is probably really unnecessary and then I played cash for the first time in a few weeks and I just texted my boyfriend and I was like oh my god I love poker I'm like addicted to that's poker hilarious. I didn't want to leave so that's awesome I really like poker so it's yeah. like a 10 basically yeah 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 it's a 10 I think that not many people love poker more than me that's really play. cool yeah it's cool to uh, find something find the thing you love do yeah. it do it for a living yeah and life is good exactly I agree all right, cool. Well, that's all the questions I have for <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Kristen Bickholm, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you.